Big mountain to Dahlia. It is, and 57 miles to town. Never been that kind of country, but but the little by little we we got adapted to it. First time we went to Snake, it was from Dehor Spring down. We didn't six miles. Yeah, six miles. We didn't know much about it. And then no, we didn't have a decent shoes because men didn't tell us. We should have had a boots or something like that, so we went like a little um, everyday shoes. And down the hill, a steep hillside, and it was quite an experience. Huh? Okay, when you, I started milking the cows the back home when I was five years old. You know, and that's the way we learned all of that little bunch of sheep, and we know they had to work this before they came to the United States. But that, this is such a big country. We never been big country like this. That's this big. Oh. After so many days, you have to move the camp to another place. You had to pack all the your gear and the boxes or whatever, and the, you had a maybe five meals, and the, we had a camp tender, and they had to load those meals, and they move from one place to another and establish a brand new place to be for another week at least. You want me to talk to you Basque a little bit? Yeah. Nice to have you in Salane Berbejeun. Or is it Euskira? That's in Basque. And I ask you the how you want me to talk, you know, the Basque. continue to run about uh, over 7,000 ewes and about uh, 1,500 ewe lambs uh, in the same basic area, north on the desert of uh, Minidoka and then in uh, southeast Idaho uh, in Soda Springs and Lava Hot Springs, a very good, excellent country. We make very nice lambs, big heavy lambs, and uh, we're proud of that, kind of been our thing. We're trailing on the same roads I trailed on when I was a kid. I'm uh, 60 years old now and I was Helped my dad trail on those roads when I was uh, just a, a young boy. My dad came from the, uh, the French Pyrenees. It's on the uh, northern side of the ridge, you might say, between uh, Pyrenees Mountains that divide uh, Spain and uh, France. His family had, in by country standards, quite a large number of sheep, around four or five hundred head. He had a lot of experience. He really knew what he was doing. There were other, uh, a lot of Basque men that were coming to the Western United States to herd sheep. And so he thought, by golly, I'll go there and I'll make some money and I'll come back here someday and I'll buy a place and have my own place here in France. His intentions were to return. And at 16, he went there to uh, work for this uh, sheep outfit that was owned by three Three Basques, we call them in Basque, kind of a slang, but the mutil sarras, that means old boys. And uh, their word was their bond. Uh, they had great credit. The old Basques, they could borrow money on their name because the bankers knew that they'd get paid back. It's just a proud heritage here of uh, hard work and uh, perseverance and keep your nose clean. And uh, the American dream came true for uh, my dad and uh, my mom and uh, we're very proud of that. Uh, both of my parents were from the Basque province of Vizcaya. One of the differences between the French and the Spanish Basque is that um, the 
During the Spanish Civil War, the Basques were persecuted by the Franco regime, and that did not happen in France. The, the French were never persecuted that way, but um, during the Spanish Civil War, and my mother was in Spain at that time, she was a young woman in her late 20s when this town she was living in was bombed by uh, the Germans under the direction of Franco. Well, the Germans and, uh, bombed that city, they flattened it, and many people were killed, many people were injured, and my mother has told stories about that too about when the first bombs hit it, running out of the house. Well, first they were under the tables. Then they ran out of the house and everybody in, ran off in a different direction. And uh, they bombed all the houses and buildings. And she said uh, she ran into a tunnel and there were hundreds of people hiding in this tunnel. And she had this feeling she needed to get out of there. And she ran out of there, and a bomb landed on that tunnel and killed all the people in there. And she said it was horrible. Uh, you were running, you didn't know where you were going. You would see a, a dead person here, body parts there. And finally, she ended up in a forest a little ways out of the town, and there were hundreds of people hiding in that forest. And she said, well, after they stopped bombing, then they would swoop down and just pick them off, pick, pick people off with machine guns. And she uh, finally, at daybreak, uh, she left the forest and headed toward another village where she knew family. And then they came on to New York. They were met at the dock in New York by a gentleman named Valentin Aguirre who had immigrated to New York from Spain and he had a hotel and he would go to the dock and when the ships would come in and he would ask if there were any Basques on board and then he would take them to his hotel and help them get situated if they were traveling on to other places he would uh, help them get where they were going. Yeah, it touches me. It's a part of me being Basque, and I am proud of my ethnic background. But I am also proud of being an American.